Next on Cal High Sports Bay Area, thrilling playoff and title games, including the City League Championship. Undefeated Mac playing for a Silver Bowl title, and Valley Christian takes on Oak Grove. We get our first look at basketball as we feature three foundation games from the NCS, including Monta Vista and Castro Valley. We'll see what one South Bay soccer team is doing to make Thanksgiving a happy one. And the season with De La Salle continues as the Spartans take on Pittsburgh. It's all on Cal High Sports Bay Area starting right now. Welcome to Cal High Sports Bay Area here at the Silver Creek Sportsplex. I'm Robert Bronstein. And I'm Marissa Lovis. We start this week in the NCS Division III bracket with the Camp Alindo Cougars who are 11-1, led by lineman Sterling Struthers, who is very talented and going to Yale next yeah, year. Talented and smart. Campo taking on the fourth-seeded Bishop O'Dowd Dragons, led by running back Austin Jones, who's carried for 1,300 yards this season. Campo and O'Dowd on Friday night. The Camp Alindo Cougar cheerleaders trying to get the crowd going on a chilly night at Bob Wilson Stadium. And in the first quarter, Nikki Moore rushes for a 12-yard gain on the play, setting up Camp Alindo for the first six a few plays later. And the Cougars trying to extend their lead, but Bishop O'Dowd's defense comes up huge. Javon Holland gets the interception and returns it for 32 yards before finally being brought down. Bishop O'Dowd on offense, Nick Allen finds Ethan Baker Green on a curl route. Green dusts off a few Cougar tackles and finds the end zone for 56-yard touchdown. Look at him go down the sideline. It's seven all. Late in the second quarter, Jacob Matthew Westfall running out of options decides to take off through the middle and Mr. Mini Russell Wilson sets the Cougars inside the Dragons 30. Later in the drive, the Cougars plunge into the end zone to retake the lead 13-7 and to the second half we go. Top of the third, the Dragons tie the game up, but Jack Cassidy literally crawling his way inside Bishop O'Dowd's 10 helps the Cougars get another touchdown 19-13. And midway through the fourth, Matthew Request would put the icing on the cake 25-13 Camp Alindo. And next week, the Cougars will take on the Annalee Tigers in the Division III NCS Finals. The historic City League trophy, the prize to the winner of this Thanksgiving Day game early on. The Mission Bears on the move. Noemi Harris throwing over the middle to Anthony Porter, who reaches down and makes a fine catch into the end zone. Two-point conversion, good 8 nothing. The Bucks come right back. Natalia Cisneros with a fine catch, destroying the defender, then leaping into the end zone. 8-7 mission. More Bears, and look at this catch by Frank Harris as he somehow grabs it, falling to the ground, but the Bears did not score. But Mission does score later on as Harris hits Tyrese Johnson down to about the 3 yard line and then snap it to Harris who strolls into the end zone to give Mission a 14 to 7 lead. Time winding down now in the fourth quarter. It's desperation time for Balboa and their quarterback Lee Lelea scrambling and then firing deep and there to make a leaping catch. Look at this is Cisneros everyone now looking for the call and the officials say Yes, he is in for the touchdown, and it's 14 to 13, and the Buccaneers go for two and try for the win. Lilea gets the snap, and he's pounded at the goal line by Sam Vaughn and Anthony Porter. The officials say he is just short, and by that margin, the Mission Bears win their second straight league championship, the eighth in school history, undefeated in league play, and heading to the NorCal playoffs. Contra Costa County Sports is brought to you by Stat Med Urgent Care, the right care, right now. The pregame handshake already in mid-season form. This is De La Salle hosting Bishop O'Dowd. The Spartans running off the miss as Amika Udenyi goes ahead to Nikhil Peters to Nick Markachuk. The defending state champs looking to keep it close. Michael Hauser posting up and a nice little lefty hook there. But the Spartans extend their lead. Jordan Rotino gives it up, gets it back, and nails the step back 325 to 8 De La Salle. O'Dowd has a good young big man. He is number 24, Raymond Hawkins. And Big Ray gets the putback dunk to thrill the crowd. More O'Dowd in the second as Will Chaverin takes the pass, drives strong to the bucket before floating at home. But this one was never really in doubt as De La Salle's Nikhil Peters doing good work inside on a power move right there. And a nice play here by Rotino, who drives, then floats it high over the big man, two of Jordan's game high, 22 points. A nice play here by the Dragons, Elijah Hardy spinning and scoring with the left hand for O'Dowd. 
But the Spartans win this foundation game at home, some of the proceeds going to the NCS and its scholarship fund, a great cause to start the season as Keith Tizer lays it in and De La Salle gets the big win behind Rotino and Peters. Each week, the Players of the Week is produced by the Hip Hop Department at the Rikus Center. Here they are, the Players of the Week. Like you said, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's that time of the year you gotta be clutch Gotta be hungry or just like you never eat lunch I say a hot skin's wide receiver Dreamer stepping up playing like a senior Final score of the match 6-2 to two. He scored the touchdown and interception too He's a beast, on the field he's trouble dude That's the round and left the game with a W Yo, we'll switch it up to Johnny Green The boys trade money, Green's been going dummy Me making defenders look crummy Got that juice sunny Ran for three touchdowns, straight serving game Don't no beat down, their hearts hurting man Control the first downs, with yards earning them They will never forget, he's facing a burning game Yo, he made sure they understand Happy holidays from the Rikey Center. We saw your cow high players of the week. Each week, Muir orthopedic specialists bring us great advice on sports related injuries. Here's Dr. Morale Murthy with this week's tip. Shin splints, also called medial tibial stress syndrome, involves pain along the front portion of the lower leg. Shin splints are most common in runners, dancers, and those who have recently intensified or changed their training routine. The pain of shin splints can be caused by a variety of mechanisms, including irritation or micro tears of the lower leg muscles from overuse, overpronated or flat feet, poor footwear, or weak hip muscles. Treatment typically involves rest from the aggravating activity, ice, wearing proper running shoes with good arch support, and stretching and strengthening of the lower leg muscles. The best way to prevent shin splints is to wear good supportive shoes, gradually increase training regimens, and to ice the lower legs after working out if pain or soreness begins to occur. Coming up, a big time CCS matchup with the De Anza Division rivals, Palo Alto and Milpitas. And the Branham girls soccer team giving back this holiday season. Our Spirit of Achievement feature is next. Muir Orthopedic Specialist, the leader in innovative sports medicine, is proud to present its new 46,000 square foot facility in Walnut Creek. This new leading edge facility combines high tech equipment, an Olympic weightlifting area, indoor turf field for training and rehab, and expanded physical therapy facilities. The new Muir Orthopedic Facility features efficient and personalized check-in, spacious reception areas, and on-site digital x-rays for fast results. For the best care for your treatment and recovery, visit the doctors at Muir Orthopedic Specialists. The Rikus Center for Human Enhancement offers a range of programs in the athletic fitness department designed to train athletes of all ages and abilities. Our programs range from Rise Up for student athletes 9 and older to Pinnacle and Team Training Sessions for more advanced athletes with a specific far-reaching goal. Or sign up for CORE and get a customized workout plan designed for whatever intensity or ability level you want to achieve. From Pinnacle to CORE, the Rikus Center has a program to help you achieve your goals. So it's simple, if you've got goals, Come to the Rikus Center. It's a new season at Stevens Creek Toyota, and we're proud to present this year's all-star lineup. Like home run deals on Camry, the original Swagger Wagon Sienna, and our number one player, better than par, Prius. Plus experience genuine Toyota service in our state-of-the-art facility. They're all here, your hometown champs, only at Stevens Creek Toyota San Jose. Visit us online at StevensCreekToyota.com. We are back at the Silver Creek Sportsplex with action from the CCS Open 1 division, where the Palo Alto Vikings scored an upset last week, taking down the number three seed to earn the right to play the Milpitas Trojans in the semifinals. And the Trojans beat the Vikings in league play, but that was a long time ago, so anything could happen in this one. It's Pally and Milpitas in this week's game. The Milpitas Spirit Squad staying warm as their Trojans hosted Palo Alto on a chilly night. First quarter, Milpitas is looking to get on the board, but Riley Chauvin has other ideas as he skies high for the pick and we stay scoreless. Back come the Trojans and this time they would find the end zone as Dijon Crome takes the give and cuts it up the inside as he goes untouched for the 11-yard score. More Milpitas ground game as this time it's Tariq Bracey on what looks like the same play. He scampers 37 yards to Paydirt and it's 14-0 Trojans. 
Second quarter now in the third back of the Trojan Trio gets into the act as Cruz Chavez scores from seven yards out and stretches the Milpitas lead 21 to nothing. Senior quarterback Oliver Svierski dials up a quick screen out to Chavez and he sets up a block nicely and weaves his way down the sideline and deep into Viking territory. Melpitas goes back to the ground on the very next play as Creme takes it through the middle, breaks a couple of tackles and he's in to give the Trojans a 28-0 lead. Pally looking to get something going in the second as Justin Holt airs it out to his number one target, Eli Givens, who makes a nice catch but that drive would stall. Fourth quarter now and it's more brazy. He's just a sophomore, folks, and he could be carrying the load for Melpitas for a while. Milpitas still doing work on the ground late as Creme would get his third score on the night. And Milpitas advances to the CCS Division I Championship against Bellarmine. Eight seeded California School of the Deaf welcoming their team to the floor as they take on the first seed Waldorf Wolverines. First game, Brianna Dyke high set over to Chelsea Pedersen who smacks it off the block and down. Wolverines respond, Viola Wallace setting it over to Tallulah Frawley just getting it over the net and in and Waldorf wins game 125-16. On to the second, Wolverines looking for another big spike but Jada Dawson is right there for the block keeping the Eagles close and another nice block by Brianna Morales keeping the ball alive and Farrah Harmount will set up Dyke who finds the perfect spot for the kill and the Eagles get within four. But the Wolverines would pull away late. Wallace again with the set this time to Simone Frawley who spikes it straight down and no one is getting that. The Wolves take a close 25 to 22 second set. Third game, Waldorf finding a rhythm. Eliza Wolcott bumps it over to Foley who smashes it through the blocks for an early lead. Eagles hanging on for dear life and getting denied on the first spike attempt, but Pedersen is right there for round two, banking it off the blocks for the score to stay alive. But the Wolverines would be too much in the end. Who else but Wallace setting up Wolcott for a perfect spike to the far corner. And the Waldorf Wolverines win by a score of 25 to 10 for a three game sweep, advancing to the second round of the Division VI NorCal playoffs. Each week, Stevens Creek Toyota brings us stories of athletes who have overcome adversity in their lives to succeed in school and in sports. Marissa, this week we go to South San Jose, where one soccer team was taking some time out of their Thanksgiving week vacation to make Thanksgiving a little bit better for families in need. Instead of relaxing on a day off from school this Thanksgiving week, the Branham girls soccer team is here. Yeah, let's see here. Mashed potatoes, green beans, cranberries. When they are done, 120 bags will be filled with food for families in the Branham neighborhoods, who otherwise would not be able to afford a Thanksgiving dinner. Well, to see how many families there are that don't have like food and everything, or like aren't together with family, they're not having experiencing the Thanksgiving dinner. It makes us like really happy to make like to get a hundred people and give them food and ha see their reaction and how happy they are. So the girls are here working for others. They will be back just before Christmas to do it all over again. It's part of knowing how fortunate they are during this holiday season and knowing there are so many others left out. Making sure those people have a Thanksgiving dinner means a lot. There's so many families that like need help and so to be able to do this and provide for them is just a really warming experience. And to do it as a team too, it just allows us to grow even closer. And the girls do get as much out of it as they give. It's, just, it's fantastic for these young ladies. It gives them a whole sense of community and feeling like they're involved with other people that are less advantaged than they are. And it really Really grows. You can see the look on their faces. They're really happy to do it, and it is a fantastic thing. It's a great team building activity for us as well. So it's a very positive activity. There are high schools all around the Bay Area who are giving this holiday season. Most will get no recognition, but what they will get is the warm feeling that comes from giving. From knowing while they enjoy their Thanksgiving dinner, their work makes sure others will have the same happy moment for at least one night with their families. Yeah, I'm really excited for Thanksgiving. It's one of my favorite holidays. Family all comes together and it's really nice to have those moments with my family and I hope everyone else's holiday is just as great as mine. The families receiving the food all fill out applications so they know there is a real need there so they're doing a great job for families right there around the Branham community. And it's nice to see the girls giving back during this time. Absolutely, great job. All right, once again this season, the 49ers present the Coach of the Week Award, the winning coach to receive $1,000 from the 49ers. Now the 49ers staff and Ian Williams, mm -hmm. who's our friend who does this every week on the Air Force, they are in deliberations. They haven't decided yet. They're waiting one more week, so we'll have the announcement on the Coach of the Year right here next week. And Robert did cast a vote. I get no vote at all, <laughs> as usual. Coming up, back to the CCS playoffs with Silver Creek battling Hillsdale. But first, here's our Chevron Girls Volleyball Poll.
Little Kickers is a great soccer program for your child. With coaches trained in child development theory, Little Kickers classes are tailored to meet the specific child's age and ability. This creative approach to coaching will have a positive impact on your child far beyond the soccer field. These fun high energy classes at the Silver Creek Sportsplex lead to children with strong physical skills who are well balanced and confident. Classes are available now for ages 18 months to 9 years. Sign up for Little Kickers at the Silver Creek Sportsplex today. Guys, I got the jerseys. Oh, nice. <laughs> El Nino. Aquí. Ready? Spray Dan. Oh, yeah. Don Ovan. I think that's me. You guy. It's 40 bucks. Can you cover that? I'll send it to you right now. Done. Okay, got it. So Hattrick Rick, he's the best player on our team. You get the ball, you give it to him. Great. Rick. Ooh. On your phone, online, on the go. Wells Fargo makes it easy to get banking done. All right, Don, you're on. Nope, just kidding. When an athlete is injured, you need the right help right away. Stat Med Urgent Care has only experienced medical specialists on duty seven days a week. With no appointment needed on-site x-ray labs and private exam rooms, you'll receive the best possible care right away. For immediate medical issues to routine care, StatMed has two locations in downtown Lafayette and in the Pleasant Hill Concord area near the Sun Valley Mall. StatMed Urgent Care, the right care right now. Back at the Sportsplex with the CCS Division 4 bracket featuring Hillsdale and Silver Creek. The Raiders are led by outstanding running back Dante James. Yeah, Dante is excellent, but Hillsdale also a very good team. They're the top seed in the division with just one loss all year. Ocean Division champs with pretty good running back of their own in Cameron Taylor. He's a senior. Hillsdale and Silver Creek in the D4 semifinal Friday afternoon. The four-seeded Silver Creek Raiders storming the field as the Raiders visit the first-seeded Hillsdale Knights. First half, Cameron Taylor takes an inside handoff, finds a hole, and turns on the Jets, and he hits the corner, taking it all the way down to the 30-yard line for the Knights, but they would turn it over on downs with one minute left in the half, and that paves the way for Raider running back Savali Tautiaga, who bursts through a few arm tackles and turns it on to break a big one rumbling down the sidelines and into Knight territory where the Raiders would punch it in for a 7-0 score at the half. Knight settled down in the second, dumping it off to Taylor now, wearing number 10, and he makes a few cuts inside, carving his way into the end zone. We're tied at 7-all. The Raiders respond with big back Dante James, who finds some daylight, hits the hole and takes off down the field, carrying defenders with him, but the Raiders did not capitalize, handing it back over to Hillsdale on downs, and that sets up the Knights quarterback back Brett Wetland who pump fakes and chucks a perfect spiral downfield finding Isaiah Cozzolino in stride for great field position there and Cameron Taylor would do the rest taking the snap out of the Wildcat following his blockers into the zone as the Wildcats win this one 23-7 advancing to play Aptos in the Division 4 final game. Another big water polo win for the Sacred Heart Prep boys team. Yes, the Gators took some time this week to meet with our Jack Washer to celebrate the victory at the Rikus Center. We're at the Rikus Center here on Edison Way in Menlo Park, the Rikus Center, where goals are achieved. Another CCS championship in the books, and here they are, the Sacred Heart Prep Gators boys water polo team. Congratulations, guys, here with uh, Finn Banks. Finn, uh, great distributing in the uh, championship game. I've noticed that over the last couple of years. Do you get more thrill out of distributing or actually scoring? Uh, I think both are really fun to have. Uh, I know that either way it really brings the team together and it really uh, we can really re rally behind both of them and I think a good pass is just as good if not better than a good shot because in the end a goal is a goal and I think that's a big part of the team that we're if the pass is there we're always going to make it instead of making the selfish play. In the middle here Jackson and right Jackson once again, you guys defeat Menlo in the championship game, and they are your rivals right down the street from you guys, and you never play them during the regular season, but do you guys have a little bit more motivation when you go up against a school like Menlo? Uh, you know, there's always a ton of motivation going up against your crosstown rival. Uh, we play a ton of tough games all season. We had a really uh, tough schedule this year. We played against lots of good teams, and you know, every game that we play just prepares us for that final championship game, and that's really all that uh, it leads to. That's the game that we ultimately want to win at the very end. So there's lots of tension, but we really just go out and get it. So. Over here we have Alex T, but you know, I, I knew I was going to butcher his last name. So Alex, last name? Sotadze. Talk about your coach, Brian Kruitzkamp. I mean, he seems like he is motivating you guys every play, regardless if you're up 
nine eight or fifteen of two. Yeah, I mean, he he just wants us to go as hard as we can and do the best that we can at all times, and he does that great. And he knows how to get everyone to be their best and play their best. And in the end of the day, that's what works. <laughs> All right, guys, congratulations on yet another CCS title. Best of luck in the future, and the floor is yours. Let's go, bring it in. Let's go. Team on three. One, two, three. Team! Service by Medallion honors teamwork and teammates who partner together to make great plays. This week, it's the flea flicker from Reardon's Jason Green back to Jackie Luavasa to Aiden Verba Hamilton. Great teamwork there, just as Service by Medallion partners with its customers to provide great janitorial and facility support services for Silicon Valley's best companies. This season, OneHitAway.org brings us concussion safety tips every week. Here's Darren Sidibaka with this week's tip. If and when you experience a concussion, it is essential that you stay hydrated with plenty of water. Water delivers nutrients and flushes toxins out of the brain, which is crucial in a concussed state due to high inflammatory environment. Water allows the brain to produce electrical energy, hormones, and neurotransmitters like serotonin, which are interrupted during a concussion. A rule of thumb is to drink half your body weight in ounces per day. For example, if you are 200 pounds, drink 100 ounces a day. It is also important to spread water consumption throughout the day. The brain does not have the ability to store water. One hit away, understand your brain can change your game. Coming up, it's the Wells Fargo Bank Game of the Week. It's the Silver Bowl with McClymonds and Fremont. And later, Foothill meets Najee Harris and Antioch as Cal High Sports Bay Area continues. Hi, my name's Tom McGraw. I'm the CEO of First National Bank of Northern California and the former Bellum and Bell. Our bank is owned and operated locally by people who treat our customers like family. You can trust us to give your family or business the best banking services from a bank that's been around for over 50 years. And now we're in Sunnyvale at 425 South Matilda. Remember, go long and don't drop the ball at First National Bank of Northern California. The San Francisco 49ers are committed to helping kids live a healthy, active lifestyle. You're plenty fast enough. You're plenty fast. Exchange, exchange. Good, go, 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 go. Check out 49ers.com slash YF to see how you can get involved. Cal High Sports Bay Area is brought to you by these fine companies who care about high school sports. By the Silver Creek Sportsplex, the largest indoor sports and fitness facility of its kind in the United States. Our doors are open to the public every day. Come see why people call us their home away from home. By Club Sport Fitness at the Silver Creek Sportsplex. Visit clubsport.com for a three-day trial pass. By Chevron, every day your car takes care of you. Take care of it. Don't use low quality gasoline that can leave deposits in the engine. Use a gas that cleans. Chevron with Tecron. Care for your car. Buy Calpine a generation ahead today. And by the Del Grand Dealer Group. Go to DGDG.com and be a happy car buyer. Once again this season, Wells Fargo Bank presents the game of the week each week. You can go to CalHighSportsBayArea.com to vote on next week's game right now. Each team to receive $500 from Wells Fargo Bank as part of the game of the week. This week, the most votes went to the Silver Bowl. It's McClymonds and Fremont played at Laney College Friday afternoon. And this game was such great tradition. You might remember the Marshawn Lynch quote that Robert got back in 2003. And if not, we're going to go to it right now. You see, our, our basketball players came out. They helped us a lot. Our linemen, oh my God, if my linemen wasn't so good, Oh my God, I don't know what to do. And me being as broke as I am, I'm about to find a way to treat my alignment to sizzling or wherever they want to go. I love this. I never had this. This is my first championship and I've been playing football for I don't know how many years. You don't know how good this feels to me. And I want to thank everybody who did support me because I know there was people out there who doubted us. Like everybody in the Oakland Tribune. That quote is a classic. You've seen it everywhere, but we shot it right here on he this show. He shot it. I shot it. I couldn't stop laughing behind the camera. I know. We need to get another quote this year. Yeah, with Marshawn. Come on down. <laughs> All right. It's Fremont and McClymonds vying for the Silver Bowl trophy. In this week's game, Robert was there. 
The Oakland League Players of the Year honored before the game. Fremont from its own end zone. The ball is fumbled. The Tigers recover, but that's a safety to nothing McClymans. Later in the first, handed to the league MVP. That's Jarrell Alberti. He gets some great blocks and races in from 36 yards out. It's 8 0 Mac. The Warriors go for two. Eric Coleman fires and connects with Jameer Denard. It's 10 0 McClymans. Mac looking for more, but big number 77, Feely. Tonga Aia wraps up the ball, carrier in the backfield. Good defense by the Tigers. Late second half now, still 10-0. Mac Fremont desperate for a score, but the pass is picked here by Angelo Garrett, and this is a pick six for Garrett. 21 yards on the return, 16-0. Fremont throwing again, but again, great Mac defense. This is Tavion Foster. We met him on the show earlier this year. This one of two sacks in the game for Tavion. Late fourth now, and this will wrap it up. Another pick six for Mac. This time it's Donald White stepping in front and racing it in, 22-0 at that point. Mack goes for two as Coleman hits a diving Derek Purvis, 24-0. Mack wins it as McClymans wins it six straight Silver Bowl title, 24-0 the final. Mack going to NorCal's with a sparkling 11-0 record. The Warriors very happy to win the Silver Bowl one more time. And here they are, six-time Silver Bowl champs, the McClymans Warriors. Congratulations, guys. Right, right here with me, Dylan Lewis. Hey, Dylan, talk about this game and what this game means to you guys to win it for a sixth time. Well, this game means to us, it means a lot because we have, we wanted to let everybody know that it's Mac football up here and over everybody else is below us, baby. It's Mac football or nothing, baby. Going to Darryl, Darryl Aikens here in the middle. Darryl, I know you've been fighting cancer all year long. You're healthy now. How does it feel to be healthy and be part of this victory? I ain't gonna lie, I'm just happy to be back on the field. I missed out last year. <laughs> Is it great to have your teammates support yeah, right Yes, now? yes, very good. Very good. Donald White, Donald, you guys going to NorCal's now. What, is, what are your plans going into NorCal's? Uh, our plans are to win it all, bring it back home to Oakland. You guys have had some tough times in the past. You wanted to go to state last year. We're not allowed to go. So what's it going to mean to be able to go to state this year? It's going to mean a whole lot to us. We've been working all summer. <laughs> We've been working all summer to get here, and now we finally here. We're gonna win it all. And talk about talk about Coach Peters and the coaching staff. What the coaches bring to this team? They're outstanding coaches. They never gave up on us. Um, I would have gave up on us, too. but um, they like they're just outstanding coaches, and they have faith in us. They love us. So. Hey, congratulations, Mac Warriors, Mac House. NCS scholarship game between Castro Valley and Monta Vista, both teams pumped up for the season to begin. First quarter, Castro Valley starting things off. Lawrence Johnson passes to Tommy Faudska for the three ball, and the Trojans take an 11-2 lead. More CV here, Bryce Thompson dribbling down low before dishing it off to Daniel Basello under the bucket for two, extending Castro Valley's lead to nine. Second quarter, now Monta Vista got hot. Dane Brer over to Ashton Rust. Rust connects with big man Spencer Lachelle's, and we are all tied up at 24. Third quarter, MV still in a rhythm. Bryce Anderson with a great feed to Austin Fidel, and you can count all three of those. It's 31-27 to Mustangs. CV still hanging tough midway through the fourth quarter. Bryce Thompson on the assist to Trevlin and Dondas. feel like I'm watching some other Bay Area championship team, and we are locked at 47 apiece. The Mustangs come right back and answer. Kevin Yerna passes to Corey Jackson. Jackson to Fidel, and he hits another three. 50-47 to MV. Tied at 52 again. Great passing by Monta Vista. Anderson to Corey Jackson. Jackson to Yerna, who gets a putback and the 54-52 lead. Under 20 seconds left, tied at 55, all after a Castro Valley three and Monta Vista free throw. The pressure was on, and it's Tommy Faustco with the rebound and lay in to win the game. 57 to 55, your final, a thrilling scholarship game to start the season. Lexus of Stevens Creek is kind enough to present the Volunteer Award each week. This award going to student athletes who volunteer in the community. This week's Lexus of Stevens Creek Volunteer Award goes to Kirsten Cook from Los Gatos High School. When Kirsten isn't in the pool, she is volunteering her time at the Walden West Camp. She provides an outdoor experience for over 2,000 children aged 3 to 18. She is also involved in the Under 21 Club, hosting sober mic nights for teens to fight substance abuse. Kirsten talks about why she loves to volunteer. Um, I really like helping my community. I think there's a lot of people out there that need or want help, and if nobody's willing to provide it, um, I don't know how they'll get help, so I really 
I think it's kind of just necessary, part of my life. The San Jose Sharks and Positive Coaching Alliance are back with us this season presenting the Triple Impact Competitor. These are athletes who make themselves better, their teammates better, and the game as a whole better. This week we honor Oak Grove running back Rashawn Fontenet. Rashawn is also outstanding on the track and the leader for both teams at Oak Grove. A leader on the field and on the track, Rashawn will receive four tickets to an upcoming Sharks game and a replica jersey as this week's San Jose Sharks Positive Coaching Alliance Triple Impact Competitor. Coming up, Rashawn and his Oak Grove Eagles battle Valley Christian. And the season with De La Salle football continues as the Spartans take on the last Bay Area team to beat De La Salle, the Pittsburgh Pirates, next. Kale High Sports Bay Area is brought to you by these fine companies who care about high school sports. By Stevens Creek Toyota, the number one Toyota dealership in the Bay Area. Stevens Creek Toyota, it's where the deals are. By Mirror Orthopedic Specialist, providing leading edge care for athletes of all ages. By First National Bank of Northern California, delivering quality products and services to businesses and individuals while enhancing the economic environment of our communities. We are back at the Silver Creek Sportsplex with action from the Open 2 division. It's Rashawn Fontenetta who we just met and his Oak Grove Eagles taking their 9-2 record to the semifinals. Yeah, and the Eagles are meeting West Catholic League power Valley Christian who boasts a stifling defense and a great running attack. It's Oak Grove and Valley Christian in the semis this week. A great time to be a mascot when it's freezing cold and you get that warm suit to wear. First quarter, Oak Grove's Tyler McGovern drops back, rolls to his right, looking, 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 and finds his man Fontenet, makes a move, and he's in for the 16-yard score, game tied at 7. Second quarter, Morian Walker Jr. on a trap play breaks to daylight and scores from 15 yards out to put Valley Christian ahead 17 to 7. And right before the half, the Eagles get one back. McGovern to Fontenet from 8 yards out to trim the lead 17 to 14 going into the locker room. Third quarter, McGovern finds his favorite target, Fontenet, one more time, this time from 22 yards out, and Oak Grove goes ahead 21 to 17. Valley Christian comes right back. Javon Stearns pounds his way in from eight yards out, and the Warriors regained a 23 to 21 lead. But on the ensuing kickoff, Jacob Harvey takes it from his five yard line and just turns on the Jets. Just had to make one cut to beat the kicker, and Harvey takes it 95 yards to Painter, and Oak Grove regains the lead. Fourth quarter, Fontenet at it again. This time on the ground, bounces off a defender and then strolls into the end zone. 35 to 23, Oak Grove. Fontenet one more time, this time playing quarterback, but it's a run all the way as he takes it off the left side and he's gone 59 yards to the house. Five total touchdowns on the night. Oak Grove wins 42 to 23 and will play the winner of the Wilcox and St. Francis game. Highlights from Matt later in the show. The top seeded Notre Dame Tigers playing host to Vallejo St. Patrick St. Vincent. First set, Notre Dame is on the attack as Christine Geese sets Mavis Louie, who delivers the lefty spike 5 2 Tigers. More Geese now, this time she'll finish the point herself, pounding it down for the kill. Geese would keep getting teammates involved as she sets perfectly for a streaking Jessica Baring, who finds a hole in the defense. The Tiger lead is 11 4. SPSV strikes back, Isabel Villalobos bumps to Jaden Paha, who sets to the big spike of Hallie Webster for the point. Too much ND Belmont though, here's the outstanding junior Katie Smooch is ripping it home. Second set now more Notre Dame as Gee sets to Tammy Byrne, whose nifty set shot lands inside the line. Now Smoot here off the overpass and that one's not coming back. Smoot would keep on rolling as the outstanding junior takes the set from Geese and that one's not coming back either as the Tigers win the second. 25-11, the Bruins still fighting. Look at the diving save by Makala Balco, who gets it to Catherine Cortez, who keeps it alive for Jocelyn Cruz, and they would go on to win that point, but the CCS champs, the Tigers too strong as Baring uses the give and go to Geese to slam it home, and Notre Dame advances to the second round in three straight. We continue now with our series, the season of De La Salle football. Marissa, the Spartans go into the NCS semifinal game this week, taking on a Pittsburgh Pirates team with lots of history connected to the Spartans. The season with De La Salle is presented by Dr. Charles Preston, sports medicine specialist at Muir Orthopedic Specialist, and on the sidelines with the De La Salle Spartans. De La Salle seems like an unstoppable machine currently, thrashing its way into the NCS semifinals, which will take place the day after Thanksgiving. Gabe Cray Dozier has a lot to be thankful for. He's a special team starter for the Spartans, owner of a permanent smile on his face and a loving family as the senior Cray Dozier is the last of three sons in his family to play for De La Salle. So, we handed Gabe a camera for the week leading up to the semis. Daily struggle. Who's Jake Richard for? 
Nah, the cow had to give this to me. Mama. Uh, how do you feel about me being the last Spartan? Bittersweet. I'm sad, but I'm happy. You've had a wonderful journey, but it's the end of the era. You're number three, and we're done. <coughs> Mom. Yeah, Grant. Shh. We're recording. Hopefully, we'll cut this out. And playing on my on Owen Owens Field for the for the <laughs> for the last time. Uh, I don't know, it's, it's just a sad thing to think about, and I don't want it, for me at first I don't want it to end, but I know it has to. Why do you have a nice camera? You're not allowed to have nice things. One try, one break. <laughs> Hit it. Ah! <laughs> That's all De La Salle in football and any other sport is. It's tradition. It lines our halls through the entire school. You can feel it everywhere you go. Being the place where the greats once stood and once stood in class is, is, should be enough motivation for you to do the best you can. Very last sport. How do you feel about me being the last Spartan? Oh, you sure? Yes. It's sad. It's depressing. Try and make it as sobby as possible, Auntie. That was awesome. Well, I'm a well-spoken young man, Papa. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Papa. Are we done? Terry Edson is a great coach, dedicated and involved which mirrors how Edson manages his off-field football team, his fantasy football team. Terry co-manages his online squad with Vic Galley, a De La Salle alum, and longtime head coach for Pittsburgh. And by coincidence, Pitt and DLS face off this week in the NCS semifinal game. But there's no love lost between fantasy football co-managers. Well, Vic and I have been together for, uh, I don't know, eight or nine years, maybe longer. I've lost track. Yeah, we've won it a couple times. We've had a little bad luck the last few years, and now, uh, so Maurice is, is, is back. We we decided to you know bring him with us. Hey, back up, back up, back that's up. all I have. Back up. Maurice would be Maurice Jones Drew, famous DLS running back, NFL Pro Bowler, and now an on-air personality talking about football and what else? Fantasy football. You know what? I was asked to help out a little bit. I still got to pay my dues, but. We're, we're in first place. Figured he'd have the expertise and have some inside information. Um, he talked like he was going to have a lot, but he has, you know, a little bit. There's a couple picks we had to battle over. All my picks are playing well. Um, all theirs are doing so-so. But all will agree, Terry is the most active manager on the team. They're going to say how crazy I am because every Thursday morning about 6.30 I start sending out texts about what are we going to do this week. My, my phone bill, my text bill is going up because he texts me at least 60 times a week about fantasy football. Whether things are going good or bad, he's just going to just scream and yell just for, the, you know, just for the sake of screaming and yelling and wanting to talk. And how exactly would that screaming and yelling sound? She's Mr. Negative and then, oh, I don't have no partners, nobody's, uh, nobody's paying attention, are we doing this or not? So, um... I can't text you. Let me know now! So, it's, it's fun. But you know what's real fun? Real football. Pittsburgh hasn't beaten De La Salle since 1991. And on this night, from the opening whistle, it's clear that streak will not be broken. Twat! Keep doing it, baby! Keep doing it! Just five minutes into the first quarter, the Spartans streak out to a 28 to nothing lead. Anthony Sweeney scores twice, as does Antoine Custer. And with seven minutes left in the first quarter, the game is out of reach. We're doing very, very well. We're uh, performing how we practiced and uh, very excited to watch. It's awesome. That was like an old uh, Mike Tyson fight <laughs> when he would go in the ring and be left, right, and knockout. It was essentially over three minutes into the game. You guys have to understand the process to which we got there. If you guys do that, you guys can be really, really, really good. You were tonight. 
with the NCS title bout next week and the state championship just one game away. If the rest of California isn't fearing a matchup with De La Salle, they probably should be. So the Spartans win again, advancing to the final game of NCS to take on the winner of the Foothill Antioch game, and we'll have highlights of that one a little bit later in the show. They're just so good. They're definitely good. We'll see how good next week. It'll be a good test. <laughs> all right. Synergy Environmental Solutions cleans up environmental hazards, asbestos, mold, and all the dirty work for Bay Area schools, corporations, and homes. So each week, Synergy honors the athletes who do the dirty work on the field. This week, doing the dirty work is Isaiah Hodgins from Berean Christian. Isaiah scored the only touchdown and had two interceptions in the Eagles playoff win last week. Isaiah's dad, James, is the head coach and a former Oak Grove and NFL player. Isaiah Hodgins doing the dirty work just like Synergy Environmental Solutions. We have a brand new website we think you should check out at cowhighsports.tv. It has all of the elements to our show, including the entire show, but what we think is really cool is that you can see every play from every game that we've shot this year right there on the cowhighsports.tv site. Check it out right now and watch some entire games at cowhighsports.tv brought to you by Intel Compute Stick. Connect Compute. It's that simple. Remember, you can still buy DVD copies of every game you see on the show tonight. Just go to our CalHighSportsBayArea.com website and order your game right there. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at CalHighSportsBA is our handle. We now have more than 10,500 followers. And coming up, the NCS Division I semifinal with Foothill and Antioch. You will hear the name Najee. And later, it's the big bone as Lincoln tries to extend its win streak over San Jose. Coming up. Club sport at the Silver Creek Sportsplex is fitness for the entire family. Mom can feel secure in one of 120 individual fitness classes while the children play in the child care center or learn to swim in the club sport pool. Dad gets a great workout in the state-of-the-art cardio and weight training area. Classes range from Zumba to aquatics and everything in between. No matter what your fitness goals are, club sport welcomes everyone. Club sport San Jose has something for the entire family. DEFCON Construction is number one in the Bay Area and Silicon Valley because of trust. 95% of our business comes from repeat customers. They know the customer is our top priority. That's why DEFCON was the choice for the 49ers new stadium and for the new Earthquake Stadium. DEFCON was also chosen when outstanding schools like Bellarmine, St. Francis, St. Ignatius, and Midi wanted the very best, on time and on budget. Top Bay Area companies know DEFCON is the best choice whether it's new construction or renovation. DEFCON Construction, helping to build the best in Silicon Valley. I definitely got a lot faster. A couple days after I did my first class, I improved my 60 time to showcase by 0.3 seconds, which is outstanding. Uh, well, definitely working on the form component. Uh, I usually run upright where you're supposed to have your chest at a 45 degree angle. We worked on that and worked on it until I could actually feel myself uh, when I did something wrong. But definitely that improved 60 time uh, helped and a lot of coaches came up to me and talked to me after that. It doesn't matter whether you're the biggest guy or the smallest guy in the gym. You always treated the same, and it's just a great place to be. When you first walk in, you can't help but smile. There's a chance in front, Podolsky scores! When you're at home watching, you don't get to feel how exciting it is. It's like one big party with 17,000 of your closest friends. Oh, yeah. And a big hit in the corner! You can really feel the building shake when the Sharks score. You gotta see it live to get it. <laughs> it's, it that's the funny part, is it's hard to describe unless you've been there. This is Dr. Michael Miklich of Muir Orthopedic Specialists on the sideline with the Monta Vista High School Mustangs. And you're watching Cal High Sports Bay Area. We are back at the Sportsplex with action from the NCS Division I bracket. It's a semifinal game between Foothill and Antioch. The Antioch Panthers featuring Alabama-bound junior Najee Harris, but they have a tough opponent this week. Roll tight, roll. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but the Falcons are flush with playoff experience in large part to head coach Matt Sweeney. It's our Togo's monster game and our Jack Washer was there. Monster game. Yeah. Right to the action because this one was as good as the hype. First quarter getting it started with Isaiah Floyd. Floyd with a sweet cut and then shoots himself out of a cannon. 70 yards to the house and that put Foothill up 7-0 early on. Antioch would come right back with a 15-yard Najee Harris touchdown. He just makes it look so easy. 8-7 Antioch after a successful two-point conversion. Second quarter, Ben Woolrich drops back and finds Floyd streaking past the defense. Finally dragged down inside the 10-yard line. Foothill scores a play later to retake the lead. 
Harris comes right back, this time exploding over the defense for a two-yard touchdown. Antioch led 16-14 at the half. Third quarter after an Antioch muff punt, Woolrich finds Blake Braden down the middle of the field, 23 yards on a pitch and catch, Foothill up 21-16. Later, Falcons had it again, Floyd on a toss, so shifty, finally plows his way in for an 11-yard score and a 28-16 Falcon lead. But Antioch comes back on the next drive. Who else but Najee Harris? Too big, too fast, too strong. 80 yards to Painter. He would tally 394 rushing yards on the night. But Foothill would have an answer. Woldridge to Ruben Mercado from 33 yards out, and that made it 34-24 Foothill at the end of three. Fourth quarter just handed to Najee Harris. You know you want to. Dips inside, then outside. The most dynamic player I've ever seen. 44 yards on this touchdown run. Lead cut to 41-32. 41-40 Foothill laying the fourth, but Floyd changes that in a heartbeat. On a sweet left, makes a great cut, and he's gone 47 yards. He finished with 219 yards and four touchdowns. After an Antioch turnover, Foothill gets it back, and they go into their bag of tricks. It's a halfback pass from Josh Merriman to Matt Gates, and Foothill is up 55-40, but Antioch wasn't done. After scoring, then getting a turnover, Harris in for his sixth touchdown of the night. That cut the lead to 55-54. Antioch goes for two in the win, but the Foothill defense holds the Panthers inches, and I mean inches, from the goal line, and the Foothill Falcons win an instant classic by a final score of 55-54. to Defense was championships, DWC, that's what we've been saying all year. So uh, we've had the best defense in the league, in our opinion, best defense in the section. So it, it was time to step up, and we, we did, yeah, we stopped them. In Antioch with the Monster Game, I'm Jack Washer, Cal High Sports, Bay Area. Big crowd on hand at Berkeley to see the Yellow Jackets take on El Cerrito. The Gauchos out running early. Check out number five, Randy White, with a great poke ahead to his teammate Isaiah Fuller, all alone under the basket for the two. Jackets hanging around in the first half. Check out Niles Malone taking it to the rim. Hoop and some harm for the senior. Later, it's Aaron Banks for El Cerrito with a great pass to the cutting Sharab Niima, and he lays it in. Gauchos on the break again. It's Saeed Bridget to Mustafa Bey, who gives it right back to Bridget for the easy deuce. Bridget leading the break one. Once again, ahead to Naima, who goes right back, and we have an alley-oop as Bridget goes up and hammers it home. Gauchos lead 37-25 at the half. Second half more, the same Edward Gray with the great feet inside to Bay for the layup. Berkeley still hanging around. Look at the sweet moves by Miko Hadish, and step back three gets Berkeley to within 11. But too much El Cerrito in the end. Naima ahead to Bridget all alone, who throws in the reverse jam, but wait, he's not done. Fourth quarter ahead of the pack is Mr. Bay, and he tosses it off the backboard, and Bridget slams it home. He finished with 29 points and seven boards, helping the Gauchos to a 78-64 victory over Berkeley. Each week, May Industries honors a team of excellence that is doing great work, just like the construction work being done for more than 40 years by May Industries. This week's May Industries team of excellence is the Sacred Heart Prep Girls Water Polo Team. The Gators won their ninth section title last week, solidifying their section dynasty. The Sacred Heart Prep Gators are May Industries team of excellence. Coming up, Wilcox takes on St. Francis in the CCS Open 2 Division Semifinal. But first, here is our Chevron Top 10 Football Poll. Cal High Sports Bay Area is brought to you by these fine companies who care about high school sports. By Willis Fargo, proud sponsor of the Game of the Week. By Lexus of Stevens Creek. Lexus of Stevens Creek is once again sponsoring the Volunteer Scholarship Award. Five scholarships worth a total of $10,000 will be handed out at the annual Cal High Sports Banquet. By Tony and Alba's Pizza and Pasta, come check out our sports event packages. And by the Rikers Center, where goals and dreams become a reality. We're back at the sports flag from the CCS Open Division II bracket, where the Wilcox Chargers are in the semifinals, in large part to their quarterback, Eduardo Andrade. Yeah, he's a good one. One play of the week last week. Yes, he did. He had a great game, but this week, he has to face the St. Francis Lancers, the West Catholic League co-champs, looking to advance to the final game on Friday night. Wilcox and St. Francis showing some good sportsmanship pregame. First drive for the Chargers, Eduardo Andrade hands off to Robbie Salus. Wilcox scores a few plays later to take a 7-0 lead. 
First play on offense for the Lancers. Kamali Akina gives it to Cyrus Habibi Lakio, and he sees nothing but open field. No one is going to catch up with Cyrus. We're all tied up at 7 all. More SF offense here. It's Habibi Lakio busting in for his second TD of the night, and after a missed extra point, it's 13 to 7 St. Francis. Wilcox trying to get going on offense, but Tyler McDevitt has other planes. Big QB sack to bring momentum back to the Lancers. Third quarter now, give it to Habibi Lakio, and you're guaranteed six. St. Francis now of 20 to 7. Wilcox still fighting hard. Andrade drops back and connects with Mike Hearn. Hearn all alone taking it to the house and the Chargers cut the deficit to just two TDs. But St. Francis comes right back and answers Akeen on the pitch to Habibi Lakio. And Cyrus having himself a night. Nobody going to get Cyrus Habibi Lakio. And the Lancers looking for some more insurance late. Devin Gerald barrels his way over the pile. And St. Francis wins 41-21, advancing to the CCS Division II championship championship game against Oak Grove. The Lincoln Marching Band getting the fans pumped up before the game. First quarter, Robert Zamora's pass is complete to Robert Najar for a first down, but the Bulldog defense comes through to prevent the Lions from scoring. Later in the first, Najar races in on the blitz, getting the sack. This one was a defensive struggle all afternoon. Fast forward to the third quarter, handed off to Esteban Mosqueda, and he goes 24 yards around the far side and into the end zone for the only touchdown of the game, 7-0 Lions. To the fourth, the Bulldogs looking to score on fourth down. Kylan Harris's pass is complete to Jordan Ferraz, but the Lions' D stops him short of the goal line. San Jose gets the ball back after a Lincoln three and out. Harris passes to Kevin Reyes, but Eob Faisa forces the fumble recovered by Aldo Martinez, and the Lions take over. The Bulldogs get the ball back for one last chance, but Najar gets the sack as Lincoln seals the big bone game victory and keeps the bone for one more year. The 18th consecutive big bone victory for the Lincoln Lions. It was a tight one. 7 to nothing was the final. DGDG.com is with us this season, and once again, they bring us the Be Happy Play. This week's Be Happy Play is from Castro Valley. Tommy Fautska, with just seconds left in the fourth quarter, puts up a game-winning bucket to win, and his fellow Trojans are pretty stoked about it in this week's Be Happy Play. Go to DGDG.com to find out how you can be a happy car buyer. Coming up, it's the play of the week. Here's one of the contenders. We'll announce the winner next. But first, here's this week's training tip by our good friends at the Rikus Center. My name is Robert Anguiano. Today's training tip is medicine ball push press. What we want to make sure is that make sure that when the student starts, he has toes, knees, and hips lined up. When he starts, make sure his palms are underneath the ball when he's ready to press. Make sure the ball comes straight up. Watch, watch the surroundings when you're doing it. Make sure that when he picks it up once more, he sits down, he picks it up, and kind of pushes through the hips. Make sure he gets full extension through. Each week, the winner of the play of the week gets an invitation to our end of the season awards banquet this year held at Levi's Stadium, thanks to the San Francisco 49ers. And the competition was stiff, so let's get to the play of the week. Of the week. We start with Oak Grove's Jacob Harvey, 95 yards on the touchdown return, a great run, but the blocking by the Oak Grove special teams was something special. Nobody even touches Jacob as he goes in for the touchdown in the CCS win. Here now is Bishop O'Dowd's Raymond Hawkins, the young man with a big time put back rep, Raymond Hawkins. Now we go to Balboa, time running down in the game. Balboa, the Buccaneers needing a touchdown and they get it. Lee Lilea to Natali Cisneros with a great pitch and catch the two Buccaneers hooking up for a huge play but the play of the week goes to El Cerrito Saeed Pritchett it's actually three different plays any one of them could be play of the week there's his second duck and now the third off the backboard are you kidding me it's Saeed Pritchett the outstanding forward from El Cerrito with not one not two but three outstanding dunks for this week's play of the week and this one going off the backboard and Saeed Pridget puts it home for this week's play of the week. That's the play of the week and that's Cal High Sports Bay Area for this week. Thanks for watching. I'm Robert Bronstein. And I'm Marissa Lovis. Be sure to join us next week when we have full coverage from NCS and CCS finals in football as well as state volleyball finals. We'll see you then.